We're here to talk about the uh, child care uh, story that's been in the news this week and talking a little bit about program integrity within the Department of Human Services uh, for our dollars that are supposed to be going to take care of kids uh, to make sure that those dollars, in fact, are finding their way back to children who need care here in Minnesota. We were shocked uh, to hear the story this week that money that is intended for these kids is leaving the state as much as $100 million in the news uh, story. Uh, we are responding to that and with, in our current legislation. We're trying to look at that to see before we pass anything, we have time uh, to address this specifically with what we have uh, that says that how could this happen in a state like Minnesota uh, within our current uh, legislation if we need to do anything else, what else we can do within that. One of the things that we've tried to do uh, is pass fraud protection. Uh, so that our programs are, that are there for the needy are actually people qualify for those programs and get the care that they need uh, to make sure that people qualify and that the money's well spent. Uh, we have introduced that in the past. We have that in our bill this time. We hope that the governor signs that. We are looking at augmenting that legislation to specifically make sure that we are addressing it within this uh, particular uh, problem that we have right now. So. Uh, fraud, prote fraud prevention and detection is going to be part of that. Also, we're going to be looking at some criminal penalties and then overall program integrity. Uh, so that fraud protection is something that has been very important to our caucus. Uh, we've introduced legislation in the past. We think it needs to pass. We think that this particular situation highlights exactly why we need this passed. We're tired of hearing that we already do this. We already we already check for this, we already are doing this, or we can't do this. Those are, seem to be the excuses that we get. Uh, that's not gonna work um, moving forward, so we certainly hope uh, that fraud prevention passes. Uh, I wanna let Representative Zerwas talk a little bit about criminal penalties, and then uh, Representative Franson, who's the chair of the Child Care Committee, can wrap up with uh, some final thoughts. Uh, thank you, Chair Dean. Uh, Representative Nick Zerwas, Elk River, uh, District 30, hey. Um, I think what's most shocking uh, about the, the story this week of literally suitcases full of money, taxpayer money, being loaded onto airplanes and flown out of the country is, is just how blatant and how preventable that type of rampant fraud and abuse is. We have been working for years to try to get the Dayton administration to take waste, fraud, and abuse seriously. We've had bill after bill that says, you ought to, uh, you ought to qualify for the base program that you're getting taxpayer dollars funded for. And now we're seeing a report where up to half of the child care assistance money may, in fact, be fraudulently dispersed and then, at some point, packed into suitcases as much as $100 million in cash and flown to countries that may be supporting terrorism. If I hadn't have seen the story, I would have assumed it was made up. That's how outlandish and ridiculous this is. The fact that there are no controls in place to prevent this is pathetic. Our bill that we're introducing today will immediately call for civil and criminal penalties for anybody that takes public program dollars and sends them overseas to any country currently listed by the Department of State on their travel ban list because of sus suspected ties to terrorism. This is not a time to play politics or worry about being politically correct. This is a time to attack an obvious problem where our tax dollars are being used to potentially fund terrorists. It's one thing for tax dollars to be used to train and educate the next generation of Minnesotans through childcare assistance. 
But the thought that we're funding potentially the next generation of terrorists with our tax dollars is reprehensible. And we must pass legislation to immediately stop this egregious practice. Okay. Um, thank you for being here. First, I'd like to thank Fox 9 for uh, highlighting this. Um, I have to say I was expecting uh, when Representative Matt Dean called me on Sunday and asked me to watch the news at 9 o'clock, I was expecting a few million dollars. When the $100 million was mentioned, my jaw hit the floor, uh, and it took me a little bit to be able to compose myself and wait for the uh, commercial break to come on so that I could uh, take in the information that we were about to receive. Um, the child care assistance program, I've heard time and time again, year after year, that we need to put more money into that program. Uh, the waiting lists uh, are long. Um, we've got people that sometimes don't get on that waiting list because of the fact that it's going to take a couple of years. A hundred million dollars going overseas. Uh, money that is our taxpayer dollars that should be staying here, helping uh, our children here, our families here is very disturbing. I'm gonna be offering an amendment on the House floor today that tells DHS they're gonna to have to use their own existing funds within the department uh, in order to do some uh, training and um, some integrity, uh, bring some integrity back into that, uh, into training the, well, I'm sorry, let me look at my notes here because now I'm all screwed up. Um, so we are going to have the DHS uh, with existing uh, appropriations develop and implement training for the counties and private licensing agencies on the identification and prevention of fraud in the child care assistance program. Um, child care providers are upset. Taxpayers of Minnesota are upset. They're all upset at the fact that uh, we are just shipping money, not we, um, but bad people are shipping money overseas in suitcases. Meanwhile, child care providers are getting written up for having prickly grass in their yards. They're being uh, written up for having a chipped paint or maybe a broken knob on the toy stove. Uh, this is what's frustrating child care providers. Maybe Maybe a little less of the nitpicking and a little bit more of creating some accountability in the child care assistance program. Thank you. Thanks. Is there any questions? Representative Zerwas, on, on your bill, any hopes of getting it passed yet this week and, and getting that out? Well, I think it's clear that we're, the session is running low on, on time. But this is such a significant, serious issue that um, I expect this bill will be part of the final negotiations in the supplemental bill, and I will be urging uh, members of the House in the final days to declare an urgency, um, because this is not just an urgency, but an emergency to pass this bill to cut down on waste, fraud, and abuse, and to stop the flow of taxpayer dollars that are apparently funding terrorists. Representative Zerwas, how would your bill stop people from loading cash, though, into suitcases and flying it to other countries? That's kind of hard to track that, is it not? Well, as the report indicated, um, they are being compliant. Individuals uh, are being compliant with the federal requirement to disclose the cash. Um, and so that was uh, apparent in the report. If someone is disclosing that they're, uh, that they're carrying the cash and they are affiliated uh, with a, whether it's welfare fraud or whether it's other public program fraud, we want to make sure that there's a penalty for that. Our bill would have a, a financial threshold and would have a 25-year felony for transporting taxpayer dollars outside of the country uh, to a country that's supporting terrorism. So they would have to be previously identified as somebody under suspicion or investigation for this type of fraud? Correct. Okay. No, no the, the state says that there, there's no credible evidence that this is tied to terrorism. They've done many of the, of the investigations so far. There are 10 investigations underway right now. They say that uh, the, they're worried about fraud, of course, and that there is evidence of that. But there's no uh, evidence, no credible evidence, that this is going to terrorists. Um, I think what we've seen is we've seen regional 
and terrorism and national security experts that would dispute that, that say uh, that type of money transfer is uh, being skimmed uh, by Al Shabaab in that region of Somalia as a as a matter of practice, and so the idea that they're denying that um, is is odd because. Most national security experts would disagree with that. I think the other thing, uh, Pat, is we have seen for year after year, uh, the department say there is no waste, fraud, and abuse. There is no way to cut down on this. We're already doing it. When our own Office of Legislative Auditor released a report that said in excess of three hundred million dollars was spent uh, on people that just flat out didn't qualify for the public programs they were getting money for. And that was in a five-month period. And if you remember, we had bills to increase program integrity that the Democrats on the floor of the House laughed at us and said any savings from that would be unicorn poop. They thought it was a joke. They thought it was a joke. And now what we've seen is we've seen fraudulent money in excess of $14 million three years ago, 80-some million dollars last year to an excess of $100 million in 2017. Democrats are laughing at this while terrorists are laughing at us. So uh, $100 million is uh, almost half of the amount we spend on this. That would mean that there are dozens and dozens and maybe hundreds of daycare operations that are doing this? We don't know the size and scope. That's the scary thing. And it doesn't, and we don't know that it's necessarily confined to just this public program. And I think that's a key. Um, we've been talking and identifying about uh, public program fraud and the rampantness of it for years. And there is no interest uh, by the uh, governor's office to take this issue seriously. I think the, you know, when we're looking at program integrity, you have to say, are the people who are receiving these benefits, do they qualify and are they using them for the right purpose? That is something that we need to have as a policy question. We need to have that question answered. And if you have to look at the people who are currently waiting for a slot in a child care center that can't get one because there's not enough money, and if that money is not being spent, if it's being misspent or if it's being abused, we have to know that uh, in all of our public programs. But this is particularly uh, egregious, particularly uh, concerning. And so even though we only have a few days left of session, this is a problem that has been brought to light by good reporting that we need to re respond to. And we want, need to get to the bottom of it. And Senator Abler is going to be having a hearing this afternoon, and he's going to be asking people at DHS exactly when did this become aware to you? when did you become aware of this and and uh, what did you know and when did you know it speaking of just a few days left in session how come there's time to deal with this and not what the governor calls emergency school aid funding your leadership says there's not time to deal with that <laughs> well i think uh we can pass our budget the governor uh brought this to our attention after uh the you know very late in the process and the, uh, the the education bill is moving forward. The health care bill is moving forward. Part of that is CCAP. Part of that is in program integrity. So that's what we're looking at and that we're responding to. If there's time for this, there's time for his. I, I've never seen anything like this in 14 years here at the Capitol. I've never seen anything like this in terms of a program integrity. And if this is true, if people truly are looking the other way at this, why are they looking the other way? And if this is actually happening, uh, this is an emergency. This is something that is new that we need to respond to. If we don't respond to this, we're not doing our jobs. Does this merit an OLA audit and investigation to verify that what has been suggested by this expert in Seattle is true, or are you taking the Fox 9 report at, at face value that 40 to 50 percent of CCAP money is being shipped overseas in suitcases? Um, I think what the important thing is we've already begun uh, conversations with James Nobles, uh, with the Office of Legislative Auditor. Uh, the proposed legislation uh, that will be introduced uh, today does a few very key things. It allows the department to do an immediate uh, suspension of a daycare center's license if fraud is suspected and the daycare center is not fully cooperating in the department's investigation. It creates the criminal and civil penalties for transferring money 
uh, overseas uh, to a country identified by the State Department uh, as ties with terrorism and that has a travel ban. It creates increased fraud, fraud prevention in public programs, uh, including the uh, CCAP uh, Child Care Assistance Program. And it does direct James Nobles, the legislative auditor, uh, to dig in and do a full and complete audit of the child care assistance program to get to the bottom of this. First time, but does it ascertain how the state will establish that that funds that that are going through these public programs are the funds that are going out? I mean, does it because the, the penalties are, are fairly severe as you've as you've outlined up to 25 years for some or two to five, 15. I mean, how are you going to establish that these that you know which money is going abroad. Yeah, and so that's what these financial crimes are investigated, um, you know, through very elaborate and, and intensive investigation processes, oftentimes using the financial crimes uh, task force. A, a very common question is, where were the uh, fraudulently obtained funds? Where did they come from and where did they go to? And uh, investigators in this field are experts at determining that. And if we can prove in a court of law that money was siphoned out of the child care assistance program and funneled uh, overseas uh, to these operations, uh, then there is going to be a significant criminal penalty and fine. Can you say that there's still enough time in this session to fully evaluate these and, and make sure that there are no unintended consequences that you're going to rope in here? I don't think there's unintended consequences in any stretch of the imagination when we have literally millions of dollars in cash that's being taken out of public programs, put loaded up into a suitcase, and flown uh, to countries uh, that the State Department has identified uh, factions in that country want to hurt us. You're raising a specter here that this is all going to terrorism, and, and I'm not questioning the veracity of the report at all, but it's not $100 million. That's not what the report said. And it's not all going to terrorists. It's going to families, and they might go through some credit uh, the stations that somebody takes money out of. I mean, you're, you're vilifying everyone, uh, according to the Democrats. Well, I think what we're doing is we're identifying that if there is uh, this scale of, of fraud um, and if you're fraudulently obtaining uh, taxpayer dollars, um, you can't rob a bank and then feed the homeless and be a hero. Okay? You can't do it. And so if you steal from the government to help your family, you're still a thief. And you're still committing fraud. And you're assuming all of this is fraud and all of this is stealing. And this isn't families taking money that they uh, get from, uh, from child care and send it to their relatives for help back home. If, if the money was being obtained for actual child care services, the money would be used to pay for the child care services. And how much is that? How much you, you, are you going to say? Are you conflating this that this is a, this is a hundred million dollars? You know, I, I think that uh, people at home right now are reading this or this, they're watching it on TV and they can't believe that this much fraud takes place anywhere. That money that is meant to go to take care of kids is not getting there. While other people are paying a mortgage. If you're a young family and you have a couple kids in daycare, that's another mortgage. Mm -hmm. And we have we have people who are. Using these funds, uh, they are, you know, under, they're, according to the, uh, to the department, 10 under investigation currently for fraud, which means, hey, I say that my kid's going to daycare here, but guess what? I'm going to take that money and I'm going to spend it on something else. So as taxpayers and as people who watch over that money, we need to say that is not okay. And the FBI and the criminal investigation folks here are going to be looking at where that money goes. But we have to say that this program needs to have integrity. The greedy shouldn't be in line in front of the needy. It happens all the time. We have to make sure it doesn't happen here. And this is just one particularly egregious uh, instance and the most egregious one that I've seen in my time here. So we have to get to the bottom of it, even though there's only a couple days left. We're going to do the best we can. 
understand that. Uh, what uh, Representative Ilan Omar issued a statement yesterday. Among uh, things she said was that Republicans will use this to further Islamophobic rhetoric. Is that what this is? I'm shocked if you Well, I think, uh, I think the challenge is um, we need to respond uh, aggressively uh, to protecting uh, taxpayer dollars and the integrity of our public programs. Um, we do this with no ill intent or malice. We do this uh, because we feel uh, that it's the right thing to do. Um, I don't care where the money's going. If the money is being obtained fraudulently and being spent where it doesn't belong, that's a crime. But certainly, Pat, certainly if this money is being used, taxpayer dollars are being used in any way, shape, or form to potentially benefit al-Shabaab, a terrorist organization that's taken responsibility for bombings and mass shootings that have killed hundreds, um, we need to put an end to that. We absolutely need to put an end to that. Is, is uh, misuse of uh, these benefits or other social service benefits now, is that, is that a felony in existing law? And if so, what's the potential punishment? It is a felony uh, under, uh, under current law uh, with, um, I think it's uh, up to uh, 15 years in prison, I think, depending on the scale. Uh, but it is, it is a felony uh, under current law, and this would just make sure that we understood that if we can prove this money is going uh, out of the country and to one of these, uh, one of these nations identified by the State Department uh, on the travel ban list, uh, that that's going to carry um, an, an incentive, a, uh, an escalated penalty. So this is about enhancing what's there now, not necessarily creating. Well, I think it's. I think what it's doing is it's adding to make sure because right now we're being told that packing up a million dollars. And, and taxpayer dollars and flying it on Delta uh, is over uh, overseas, uh, they're reporting it with the federal government. Um, so we want to make sure that that's being tracked back. And if that can be tracked as shown as coming from a public program, um, there needs to be a criminal penalty attached to that. I haven't done the level of reporting that Fox 9 has, but maybe you guys know. Do we know for sure that the same people who have been accused of misusing their CCAP money are the ones who are taking these, this money on the plane? Um, in the individuals I've spoken to, um, that seems pretty apparent. Has the commissioner or the acting commissioner asked for this temporary immediate suspension power? Have they asked you for that? Uh, they have not yet, um, but it's something that we believe uh, the power of the commissioner absolutely should have. Remember that the commissioner has this power in health safety issue already. Uh, the commissioner used this power earlier in the year with a measles outbreak at a daycare center, and they immediately swooped in and shut down that daycare center. What this is saying is if there's a daycare center where this type of fraud and abuse is suspected, but for whatever reason the daycare center isn't being fully cooperative, cooperative in the investigation, that that daycare center would be immediately uh, cease operation. You don't worry about unintended consequences with that? I mean, there's a, it's one thing if you're talking about a, a measles outbreak and a bunch of doctors say there's an immediate public health threat. If there's a, a sus suspicion of fraud and, and that gives a, a bureaucrat the power to uh, immediately suspend a license, I mean, Representative Franson, I'm wondering as, as a daycare provider, that's a lot of power and a lot of discretion to put in the hands of an individual in the, investigator. I would say in the statute, it calls for if the daycare licensee is not being cooperative with the department. Currently, um, child care assistance is highly regulated. So when a family comes in uh, and they are under the program, uh, there's a sign-in, sign-out sheet with them. Uh, the child care assistance forms need to be kept on record with that um, child care for seven years. So if a family were to come, if, if an investigation were going to happen and um, it's asked of Mrs. Jones to um, provide proof, Mrs. Jones is going to have to show 
all those child care assistance programs. It's all, it would be a crime, um, if I recall, for them not to have that paperwork. It's another reason why um, family child care providers um, really um, that struggle taking child care assistance because it also is that that paperwork, that burden, um, but it is also on the burden of, um, the burden of that child care provider to pro provide proof that she is or he is running a business that is ethical and um, supposed to be receiving those funds. How many CCAP eligible providers are there roughly right now? Well, anybody can be a CCAP eligible provider if they sign up with the county to do so or the state. You know, are actually in that pool right now. I, you know what? I'm not sure. Are you making an assumption that if this money travels to a country on the do not travel list that it will be used for nefarious purposes? Why should that money without, you know, a kind of investigation about what that money goes to be treated more harshly with more severe penalties than money that gets shipped to Switzerland to be put in a bank account? Yeah, but I think that's a fair question. I think what we're doing is we're following uh, from some conversations that we've had uh, with some national uh, security experts and some terrorism experts that um, there are certain uh, certain countries that we believe uh, there is uh, a natural skimming of, of money that goes through there. And whether intended or unintended, that money is going to support uh, causes that in some instances are are directly against the United States of America. Do you worry that um, you've got fraud of taxpayer money, and there doesn't seem to be any disagreement on that, but as you keep going to uh, every step, the size of the fraud, where the money's going, what it's being used for, uh, the, the evidence seems to, seems to get thinner and thinner. And did you worry that because there's talk of 100 million for terrorism in the Middle East, that if that turns out not to be true, that the thrust of trying to get at the fraud will be, will be lost and overshadowed? Well, for years we hear there is no fraud. Mm -hmm. we're already, we've already got this taken care of, or there's nothing we can do about it. Now we're saying, well, there is fraud, but we don't necessarily know where the suitcases full of money are going, or if they're going for good or bad things. We have a duty and a responsibility over the taxpayer dollars that are intended to take care of people. We have people with a lot of needs in this state and a lot of young people with great needs, medical needs, and child care needs, others that are waiting in line for help that need a lot more help than they're getting. And that is the important thing, that we have to look at those dollars. They're very scarce. People need them. Uh, and that the, the people who are greedy, the people who are misusing it, are trying to get in line be in front of everyone else. That is our number one concern, to make sure that these dollars are appropriately uh, that number one, that people who have need the help get the help, and that we're not misusing these these for other purposes. And the department can can answer questions about the program integrity of of okay, are you saying that this is actually happening? That would be good for us to hear, uh, because that that is something that we don't always hear. Uh, so we're we're very interested in getting to the bottom of this, uh, and I'm sure law enforcement will have a great deal of interest in terms of where that money is going if we, indeed it is not going where it's supposed to be to take oh, care of children. They, they say that this isn't happening, uh, that, that $100 million, you're, you're using this $100 million figure and I keep hearing it's going to terrorism. That's not what the report said. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I think we're getting in the weeds here. The point of the matter, the point, of, it is a big issue. Dollars. Absolutely, $100 million. We already know that it's being fraudulently taken from the taxpayers. We need to focus on that, bringing integrity back into the program. We have people on waiting lists that need child care, that are asking for child care. They're asking for rates to be increased, okay? And poof, $100 million over the course of just 2017 alone is very concerning. People should be upset. So while we're talking about, you're saying $100 million going overseas and funding terrorists, I, I don't care how it's being spent. If it is being illegally obtained, we need to deal with that and bring that money back to the program, bring integrity to it, so that those who need the funds have the funds available. available. Your bill is the one that talks about the money going overseas. We're asking questions about your bill. Yeah, and I think, I think what we're doing is the bill does multiple things. And if there's a portion of that money um, that is going overseas, and it sounds like there is, it, it's a whole uh, 
uh, to all observers. It sounds like there is. Um, we know that that is egregious um, and that that, that deserves uh, extra criminal penalties. Where does the state responsibility end, though? It seems like there's one component here that the state daycare dollars, but are you getting into federal and international law once it leaves our borders? No, I think what we're doing is we're focusing on the fact that if we're going to be handing out uh, large scale uh, cash subsidies uh, that are taxpayer dollars, you're talking about daycare centers that are getting millions of dollars of, of taxpayer payments. Um, we owe it to the taxpayers of the state of Minnesota um, to make sure that's going uh, to the right place. And we make sure that if it's not, if that money is being diverted, if there is large scale fraud, and then we find out that that fraud is actually going, in some instances, to fund the enemies of America, yeah, we should we should look into that, and there should be there should be a criminal penalty for that. That the federal government's problem once we're talking about leaving our borders internationally. I've been working very closely with Congressman Emmer's office um, to see what can be done on a federal scale as well. Uh, some of this money is federal. Uh, money as well, and so we need to make sure that we're uh, that we're all addressing this very serious potential national security issue. Within, within the constraints of the Constitution, how would you grab one of these money couriers at the airport and link that cash to fraud at one of these child care centers? These financial crimes investigations um, are very, very in depth. They've been done uh, for for many years. This is not something new. The the hook to uh, Loading up cash in suitcases might might be new, but to track uh, government payments to unsubstantiated or illegal withdrawals from a business, uh, to converting that uh, to illegal or uh, fraudulent uh, disbursements, um, that's done. It's been done for decades. Um, if we're able to connect uh, that that actually uh, coincides with cash loaded in suitcases and people hopping on planes at MSP. Um, and it sounds like there is uh, a bit of work that does connect that. Um, then that's when the extra penalties would come in place. Do you know what the average um, child um, assistance uh, check is? It's 1400 a month. It depends on the age of the yep. kids. So infants are, it goes infants, uh, toddler, preschool, grade school, and they, they escalate as the kids get younger, and we can certainly get you those, well, how uh, many kids those numbers. Well, that's, well, you want to take it? Oh, go ahead. But, well, I think that the, the important thing is that money that is supposed to go for needy Minnesota kids is not getting there. We know that is true. Uh, we have an allegation that uh, this could be leaving the country and that that's why it is being stolen away from Minnesota taxpayers. That's a bad thing, and that's what we're going to get to the bottom of. So we got to get upstairs. But uh, thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you.